Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Christina. In my videos, I talk about a plant-based diet, nursing school, and my cancer journey. If you like these types of videos, please like this video and subscribe down below. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about what you can expect in nursing school and, in particular, the ABSN program. So let's get into it. So my program I'm currently in is called the ABSN program, which stands for the Accelerated Bachelors of Science in Nursing program. So it is 15 months long and we I know other schools, they have programs that are like 12 months or like mine is 15 and then other schools even have 18 plus. So if you are a traditional student, that's a four year program, but being that I already had my bachelor's of science, then I was able to do the accelerated track. At my school, the basic difference between the traditional track and the accelerated track is simply the fact that the accelerated students move on to the summer and we take our third semester courses over the summer. So if you start in January, then you'll take your third semester over the fall. But if you started in the fall, then you'll take it your third semester over the summer. So it really depends when you start. So if you're interested in an accelerated program like the one that I'm currently in, I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks on things that you should know about or be aware before you apply or before you get started. So let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is clinicals. Now before I started, I knew that we were going to have some form of clinicals, but I wasn't sure because of COVID and what we really were going to be able to do. So for my school, what we do is every semester we go to different hospitals and typically like it's just different regions within the hospital, but we have different, we do have different hospitals depending on which rotation we're in. So last semester I was in BART on a general floor and then for this semester it coincides with my classes. So for example, this semester I'm doing maternal, so I had a maternal rotation. I also had pediatrics so as in my class, so then I had a pediatrics rotation. Fortunately, we couldn't go to the hospital because of COVID, but we had to do like some form of clinical experience in class. But if the hospital was open, of course, we would get that experience. And then the last part of it is med surge, which is, you know, just like a general floor, um, kind of like a mix of things going on there. I'm particular in the cardiac unit, but everyone could have something different. It just really depends what they have available with the different agencies with the hospitals. So now if you're new like me and really don't know much about the program or what it really entails in clinicals, it's pretty awesome because when you first start, you're learning all these things in school and you have that hands-on experience, but I didn't know to what degree what we were able to do. So anything that I learned in clinicals at school, we had to be checked off on or you know, you have to have like a passing grade in order to move on into your classes and into the next semesters and whatnot. But in order to move on to the hospital, you needed to meet certain requirements and certain checkoffs done before you could even go into the hospital, which is just simple things like vital signs, like you know, your blood pressure, you have to know how to do respirations by hand and, and the blood pressure manually. You're not gonna have um, like an automatic machine. Even though in the hospital you have to do that, they want to make sure that you know how to do these things manually because you might end up in a hospital later on where they don't have those machines. I mean, it's not likely, but there, there could be a chance uh, depending on where you wanna work and you don't wanna show up there and not know what you're doing or let's say a machine's not working, or um, if it's a child and you really need to like get an accurate reading because the machine's not working properly, then you need to know what you're doing. So it is super important. It kind of seems like, why would I need to do this if I don't have to do it at work? But you need to know how to do it. Like it's, it's a basic thing to know. Another thing to keep in mind before you either start the program or before you look into what different schools you have available, definitely find out about your clinical experience because there are different schools where they're like, we can't go to any hospitals right now. Everything's online, including classes for some schools. So for me personally, I cannot do online all the way. My classes right now are hybrid. 
So one week we're in, on Zoom and then the next week we're in class. So it's kind of like a back and forth situation, which isn't ideal, but at least it's better than not being in person at all and just having like assignments online consistently. So that, that if that's for you, like then look for schools that are online. But if you're like me, then you want to find schools that have a hybrid or that you are in person. But now when I go to the summer, it'll just be only accelerated students. So we will be by ourselves and it's not many of us in that specific program. So it'll be a lot easier because we could all be in person together at the same time. We won't have to do like a hybrid schedule anymore. Another thing I wanted to mention is that for your first two semesters, you are going to be with traditional students, at least at my school, that's how they did it. So I didn't know that we were going to be with traditional students. I thought the program was going to be separate from those students. So then the first day of school, I was like, oh wow, there's a lot of people in this program. I thought like only 20 people got accepted. And then it turns out to be like 50 something people there. So I was a little confused, but then I realized that it was the traditional students there as well, because what they do their first two years is they do their prereqs like we already did, and then they'll do like their, their basic like gen ed courses. So you will have times where you are with the traditional students, and then when it hits the summertime where they don't have, um, where they're off or they're doing externships, we are doing the third semester coursework. Another tip that I wanted to mention is to really keep in mind how quick the program goes because I didn't realize how fast it really was until I was in it. So for the first semester, we started in August and we were done before Thanksgiving for our first semester. So because of COVID, things kind of like compressed everything together and our uh, clinical days and our class days and our test days were just like compiled like so we had so many things due back to back to back so you were constantly busy so you have to like mentally prepare yourself for that and if you're like okay I'm already accepted I already know my calendar I'm gonna get started let's say you're you're starting in the summer then you have everything or you should have everything coming up pretty soon and you could start organizing just try your best to get ahead and you're like well i'm just starting i don't know what to really do talk to your teachers see what they recommend or even talk to a former student i always did that like i always talk to a student that is at least a semester ahead of me or ones that are graduating so that they could help me um guide me better onto what i can do to be the best student i can in that semester there's always going to be a chance to get ahead on assignments. So sometimes people are like, oh, well, it's not listed yet. And I get that. But there's always going to be like, you know, your teacher will be like, hey, there's a project due at the end of the semester or there's um, an article review or a discussion board that's not due till the end of the month or you have community service hours, things like that get them out of the way as quickly as possible because in the beginning of the semester typically is where things are just slowly transitioning and they're trying to get you started and situated for the semester. So initially I know you probably don't want to jump right into it, but just do your best to try and do that and get yourself acclimated with the material and to get those things checked off so that you won't have to be in a position where you're like at the end of the semester and you still need to get clinical hours and you have three projects to do and an article critique or something like that. Every semester is gonna be different and challenging in its own ways. So you just have to kind of maneuver around what works for you and just try and organize as much as possible in the beginning so that you can have a sense of, okay, I know what I need to do this week. I have everything I need for this week down pat and then you could just keep moving on that way and crossing off your list as you go and adding things and then deleting things and it'll be a lot smoother transition for you. Something else that I recommend is to ask questions. So whether that's in clinical or in the classroom, make sure you are asking questions. Because if you're not, then I feel like you're not really learning. And unless you're trying to just observe and soak it all in, that's fine too. But I feel like when you're asking questions, you're actively engaging your brain and 
you were speaking to your instructors or the, the nurses that you're observing or helping and you only benefit from it. Anytime I've asked questions or um, like asked a nurse if I could help with something or observe at something, they are so willing to help you learn. And there are nurses where like, you know, they don't really want nursing students there and that's okay too. I mean, they have their own thing to do. They're, they're there to like help their patients and sometimes they don't want to help nursing students and that's okay. Just find the right nurse and if, if you have if you ever have like an issue with a nurse, speak to your clinical advisor and tell her that so that you could be switched over. But typically they're really, really nice and they want the help because they're always overloaded with patients and they always have so much to do and they are really, really grateful for you being there. So on that note, be willing to do things that you might not wanna do, whether it's like a bed bath or changing sheets, um, assisting a patient to the bathroom and if you don't know how to do those things ask questions figure it out ask a classmate that maybe they're working or maybe they're a CNA or something like that just ask someone so that you can figure it out because in the beginning there's a lot of things like that that are like super basic that's like baseline even you could watch a video on how to do those things like basic things like that, like, you know, emptying a urinal or um, measuring out their output and documenting these things, like just things like that. And when you are in class, make sure that you are asking questions. And if you went over some material beforehand, if you're able to like read about the PowerPoint, even if you glanced over and you had a question, make sure you ask the teacher because that is your opportune time to speak to them. Sometimes people wait to email professor about their questions. I've done that plenty of times and then they don't get back to you kind of within the time frame that you were thinking because they have, they're super busy too. So it's really difficult for people to get in touch with each other sometimes. And if you don't have a teacher that's like responding or looking at their phone all the time, then you will have that missed opportunity to find out what you were thinking about and a lot of times we forget about the questions that we even had to begin with. So it becomes a little bit difficult to try and figure them out. My last tip for you is to do your best and take care of yourself. So I have been in this program now going on for two semesters. I'm almost done with my second semester. And I have had very few days for self-care. And it becomes so daunting and so draining if you do not take time out of your day or take time out of your week to take care of yourself. So I cannot say that enough. I say this in all my videos, but like I really truly mean it. You need to take care of yourself or you're going to burn out. You're going, your grades are going to be reflective of that or you're going to be irritable or just like not a good version of yourself so just do your best to be present in your classes be present with your family be present with your friends when you're with family or when you're with friends try to remove yourself from school mode you want to like remove yourself from that like craziness of school and trying to learn those things and just be present with your your friends and family and just try and enjoy yourself. And just remember, nursing school goes by super fast. So if you, even if you're in the traditional program or the accelerated program, it flies by. Like my first semester felt like so long when I was in it, but now that I think back to it, it feels like forever ago. So before I know it, I will be graduating in December. So I'm super excited about that. And wherever you are on your journey, just remember, you can do it. When there are times where you feel like giving up, watch this video because I have all the faith in the world in everyone watching this. And if you even have the slightest desire to become a nurse, it is so fulfilling. When you go to the hospital and you see patients and you have that patient that just says to you the nicest things ever. Like I had a patient the other day saying like, I've never met someone so caring as you. They were so grateful for my help. 
and it just makes everything that I'm doing, all the hard work that I'm going through right now, it just makes it worth it. So keep going. As much as you might feel like this is too hard, I can't do it, my prereqs are hard, wherever you are right now, just keep going. And before you know it, you will be a nurse. So on that note, I hope you guys like this video and subscribe down below. If you have any questions at all, please list them down below. Oh, you can always DM me or message me. And I also have my videos on some test taking tips and tricks. So when you are ready to start nursing school, you can watch that up there. Have a good one. Bye guys.